Example three is more of the same in that now we've got a cubic graph and we're supposed to do all the same things. But something interesting happens in this graph as well. Again, starting with step one, we need to plot all the points where the y values are zero. So if we look, sure enough, we have an x-intercept there, an x-intercept there, and all the values where y is equal to one. Careful with the scale here. Don't just go up one grid point. One is here. It's going to be up in that section. Looking on this graph, it does not look like we have any other nice points anywhere. So we can go to the next part, which says when the graph is between 0 and 1, it's going to be above. And when the y values are bigger than 1, it's going to be below. OK? So here, it's below. So I'll just draw that graph in there. Here is a section where it's between 0 and 1. That part, your graph, is above. Okay? Again, when we're talking about above or below, we're taking a specific point. If I take this red point there, where is the corresponding blue point? Well, the corresponding blue point is when the x value doesn't change. It's right there. And when I compare those two points, my graph, my blue point, is above my red point. Okay? We don't want to think, because if I was best describing the blue compared to the red, you might say the blue is to the left of the red graph. That might look more what we're talking about. When in this situation, we're always talking about the x values staying the same. How do the y values change? And your y values are always above between 0 and 1. And what makes this graph a little bit interesting is this section that's next. Because we've got a red graph between negative 1 and 0. And we need to draw our blue graph. Now, because all of those red values, all of those y values are between 0 and 1, our blue values have to be above. So. That would be fine. This would be bad. What's wrong with the purple? It's just a little bit bad. Not a lot bad, but a little bit bad. Right? It goes above 1. Right? When we're showing between 0 and 1 and our graph is above, it still has to stay between 0 and 1. This would be really bad. That's really bad, because that's way past. But this one's a little bit bad, because I went past 1 just a bit. So when we're graphing it above, it needs to stay between 0 and 1. So would they give you full marks for this one? Yes. They'd consider that fine. If you wanted to find out exactly how high some of these points should be, we could go to our calculator and do the square root of 0.125. What do I get? I get 0.353. So at this point here, where is 0.35? Maybe about there. That's an accurate, more accurate graph of that section. Domain, x is bigger than or equal to negative 1. Range, y is bigger than or equal to 0. What would the formula for this graph be? Well, if we go to our polynomials function, we have two x-intercepts. Our x-intercepts are at minus 1 and 0. So our equation would be, for the red graph, I'll do it in red, y equals x and x plus 1. And what happens at 0? It bounces. So what does that tell us about the multiplicity at 0? 
it would be squared. When you plug in 1, you get 2. When I plug in 1 here, do I get 2? Yes, so this would be, this would be the graph of our blue graph. And this is the equation of our blue graph. And you can check it on your graphing calculator. Because one of the things that starts to feel like, is it right? Like, how does this curve after? You might be really tempted to curve it down like a regular square root. So that part is a little bit tricky as long as you have it below and have an arrowhead on it, they're pretty lenient about its shape.